Harmonizers, welcome to this video with Clyde. So Clyde is a horse that was actually shipped up from the States for me. Uh, he was at one of my clinics and I was down there and he made some great progress, but the owner decided that she just wasn't at the same level where the horse was. Uh, her confidence level not as high as what this horse needs. You can see he even had a little startle there just because somebody, I think they put some food in a bucket over there and he jumped a little bit. So he tends to be very uh, skittish. I'm going to show you a little bit of just kind of moving him around a little bit on the ground so you can kind of see what he's all about. Uh, we've done a little bit of groundwork with him over the last uh, couple weeks that he's been here and my co-op students been doing a little bit with him and today I figured I would try a little bit of um, some of the work that Harmony Horsemanship Instructor Charlotte Cannon does for rewiring and rebalancing horses brains. And she's actually going to be doing a demo in Florida with me, as well as in, um, she's going to be in Virginia with me as well, uh, at some Harmony Horsemanship meetups doing a demo. So I'm going to try some of that with him because he just seems so emotional. And he's very much in that flighty um, system, like that nervous system where he's just like, he's very like looking around and... I mean, he's not horrible, he's not bad or anything like that, but he's just not in a state of relaxation. Um, so anyways, let me show you what he's a little bit like first, and then I'll do some stuff with him. All right. I'm gonna show you a little bit of his groundwork first. And what I want you to kind of notice about him is just how alert he is, how aware of my body language he is. And this is what makes him a little bit of a difficult horse to work with for people who are learning and one of the reasons why his owner ended up giving him to me is like you can see my cues are extremely subtle like there he went to look in at me and I very subtly told him to keep going and when I ask him to do different things just notice how when I go to ask him to stop like I almost don't do anything in my body language at all and he picks up on very subtle cues and if you're somebody who's a little bit loud with your body language, then they're going to find that overwhelming. So you have to be a little bit careful as to how you're asking and how much pressure you're applying and all of those things, because otherwise this horse is going to perceive it as screaming at him if you're being too loud with your body. And that doesn't mean that you can't move around. Like I want to teach him to be more confident. I want to move around a little bit. I want to be able to rub him and touch him like I'm doing there. But he also needs to, he's always going to be kind of that alert uh, horse. So he needs somebody who's going to be aware of their body movements and be careful that they're not asking him too sternly. So I just showed you a little bit, a tiny little bit of some groundwork there and showing you um, just him getting to check in. And we did a fair bit of uh, tapping work with him. So one of the Harmony Horsemanship instructors, Charlotte Cannon, she's really pioneering uh, this technique and how to rewire and rebalance your horse. I'm I'm not going to explain how to do it. That's kind of her thing. Uh, Charlotte Cannon, you can look her up or she'll be at one of the Harmony Horsemanship meetups and there's different spots that you tap in, different orders that you tap in. But we did that for a couple days and I noticed a really big difference in him. So this is uh, just after two tapping sessions, uh, how he looked on the third day. And uh, he was so fantastic. He was a lot more relaxed and rhythmic in his body movements. So when I'm looking at a horse, what I'm looking for is the rhythm of their legs. So looking for that even stride, see how his tail is just a little bit out from his body. So that lets me know that he's a little bit more relaxed in his spine. He's, his tail isn't pressed against his butt cheeks, but it's also not straight up in the air. Look at the rhythm of his legs, how the strides are even and they're flowy. They're not kind of quick and um, they're not, you know, choppy or looking kind of scared. If we're looking at his ears, we can see his ears are kind of moving around. So we can see that he's paying attention to different things. He's not fixated on any one thing whatsoever. So this is looking really, really good. And then I decide, oh, let's try the bridge. And he does pretty good there. A little stumble on the side, but very willing and totally okay with my balance. And I'm just riding in a bareback pad. I'm riding in the thin line uh, sheepskin bareback pad. And then here's a little look at the other end of the arena, the pool noodle obstacle. And he was just, he was so much better, like really 
had chilled out a little bit, became so much more relaxed uh, with me, that's for sure. And definitely um, putting a focus on getting your horse to be relaxed and be calm is so important and so helpful later on that they can be much more willing. Like he's walking through that like he's an old pro and he has the ability to look like a bomb that's about to go off because he's he's quite a sensitive horse and he'd be the type where somebody would say, oh, like, look, he's standing still. He's so good. He's so quiet. And then all of a sudden he explodes and is crazy because he's just the type of horse that doesn't handle a lot of pressure uh, well, like he's the type of horse that wants to be a good boy. And if you're too rough with him, then he's going to find it overwhelming. And he'd be considered unpredictable. And it is no stirrups November. So I, uh, although I use my stirrups a fair bit, uh, I did do a fair bit of no stirrups as well. So that's what I'm doing there with the bareback pad and just kind of hanging out on him. So uh, my... Big tip is just making sure that you have your horse relaxed first. And definitely it's worth checking out uh, the tapping technique. Charlotte Cannon's going to be coming to the Harmony Horsemanship meetups. I'll be updating my website uh, later this week with what uh, when those dates are. So there's going to be one in Virginia, January uh, 4th, I think it is, on the Saturday. And then there's also going to be one in Florida. I believe it's February 8th in Florida. Uh, it's the Saturday as well, and she'll be doing demos there if you're curious to learn more, as well as a bunch of other awesome Harmony Horsemanship instructors that will be doing cool stuff too. So I'm just playing around with his ABCs a little bit, doing some sideways and still offering a lot of positive reinforcement. I'm super impressed uh, with his horse, and it'll be interesting to see how things move forward because... I can't keep all my horses. I do have to find some new homes. Some of them I keep if I feel like they really fit in well with things that I'm doing. Uh, but Clyde, whoever he ends up going to, if he if I end up uh, finding him a new home in the future, will need to go to somebody who's aware of their body language and it tends to be more soft with their cues. Uh, he's, he's definitely a good-natured horse and tries super, super hard. And little things like that, that's just him not 100% sure of what I'm asking. And as long as I don't get mad at him and I just stay consistent and soft and I just wait for him to find the answer, he's pretty willing to try. He's got a lot of try in this horse. So I hope you guys enjoyed meeting Clyde. That's the end of his session there. Uh, he's a really handsome fella, but I'd love to hear what you think and if you uh, have ever heard of the tapping technique to worry before. All right. Bye for now, guys.